So should we all embrace President Blair? We turn to one man who thinks so, Times columnist Oliver Cam. Tony Blair is the dominant political leader of his generation. With Mrs. Thatcher, he is one of only two British statesmen who is instantly recognised all over the world and whose name has real clout. His appointment as President of the European Council would give the institution coherence. It would be hugely annoying to the domestic constituency that accuses him of war crimes. He should be President of the European Council. The job is often referred to as President of Europe. That is misleading. It's President of the European Council. It's not President of Europe in the same sense that Barack Obama is President of the United States. It doesn't carry executive powers. The task is to give coherence to European diplomacy and clout to the European Union on the international stage. There is no one better for that task than Tony Blair. Radovan Karadzic, the former Bosnian Serb leader, went on trial this week in The Hague for alleged war crimes, genocide and crimes against humanity. When his activities started in 1992, it was believed that this was the hour of Europe. In fact, European diplomacy failed because it lacked coherence and it lacked a real sense of urgency. Tony Blair might change that. This position matters for Europe. It matters far more for the European Union than it does for Tony Blair, who does not have to do it and would certainly lose out financially by taking on the role. By doing it, he would provide coherence to an institution, the European Union, that does a lot of good in this world and might do a great deal more. Well, that was Oliver Cam in Trafalgar Square. He now joins us in our little square here in Millbank. Welcome to the program. Do we know if Mr Blair wants this job? I think he would want it if it is a sufficiently big role. That may sound pompous, it may sound pretentious, yet how Europe treats the role will determine how seriously it's taken in the world. Can if he it, afford to take it? I mean, he's making a lot of dosh these days. Um, it is a big financial sacrifice for him. Oh. He doesn't need to take this. <laughs> Europe would benefit more from his taking it than he would benefit from it. Really? It's really oh, touching. Diane, you must go along with that. This is quite heartrending. There's something. Go on to Hanky just to dry your eye. There's something baffling about this. We refused a referendum on this constitution because we were told it's not a constitution. Ah, oh, right. We were refused a referendum on this <laughs> treaty because we were told it wasn't important. It was just tying up a few loose ends. Suddenly now the treaty is so important and the new president is so important. We need a superhero in the position. Can we go back now and possibly have a vote on the treaty? As for one thing you won't have a vote on is the president. <laughs> well, exactly. Isn't, it, isn't it magnificent? It, I mean, yeah. this person going to be president of Europe. And it's, it's not a hint that any European should be allowed to vote absolutely. for it. Absolutely. People this, like you were telling us this is we're the not allowed to what? vote. This, this, is the, this is the reinvention it's, of the papacy. We, na we now have a number of cardinals who are appointed from all over Europe, and they, they meet in a closed gathering, and there may be some smoke, and they then choose a president of Europe. I mean, the whole thing it's is appalling. That, it's that it's appalling. It's this appalling. program's beginning. It's kind of like question time, where you all gang up on one guest. I'm not Oliver, defend yourself. Well, that's ridiculous. It's not a constitution. It's not a constitution. It is an amending treaty. So the post doesn't matter. Diane, that's, 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 that's the most extraordinary known secretary I've heard even on this program. It is not a constitution. It's an amending treaty. This is not the president of Europe. It's the president of the European Council. It is not like the president of the United States. It doesn't have executive power, but it is a means of providing providing coherence and representation to an institution, the European Union, that does good and might do more and hasn't got the political clout on the international stage that it might have. Diane. Well, I... I where do you want to start? Well, yeah, where do I start? Let me make a, a slightly more um, uh, base point, right? You oh, know, basic. Just when we saw, just when, just when the British political system thought it got rid of Tony Blair, 
he and his key acolytes, presumably you are one, are scrambling onto... Wait, can I stop you there? No, 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 no because no, no, no. I stopped her from stopping you. Okay. Yeah, yeah. They are scrambling onto Spaceship Blair and heading to the planet Europe, right? You know, Earthlings have proved, you know, not grateful enough, so they're off to planet Europe. It's ridiculous. We should have... If, if this presence is so important, I agree with my friend Michael here, we should be able to vote for it. But, and I assure well, I, you, I, nobody I, would vote for Tony Blair. I, I agree with Oliver. If... Oh. That, if that Tony was Blair, quick. But if Tony Blair becomes the president of Europe, and let's not have any of this nonsense about president of the European Council, or whatever, the president of Europe, he will be highly effective, and that is why he must not become the president of the. Well, European so you're Council. against you being unpatriotic will not back the Brit to be the first what, president sorry, what, of Europe. What's unpatriotic about that? He's British, that? Michael. The, re the reason I'm worried you're about you're supposed to support the, British people. The reason I'm worried about the way the European oh. Union is moving is that we are transferring powers from national democratic institutions to European non-democratic institutions. The presidency is a very good example of a non-democratic institution because no European will be invited to vote for him. So, I am being highly patriotic in saying that if we're going to have an unelected figure, I want him to be as ineffective as possible because I do not wish to have powers Can transferred just, to somebody well, who's logic, not elected. That's uh, logical if you come from Michael's point of view. Have a, not a substantive uh, president, but essentially a eurocratic. Mr uh, Junkers would do very Mr. well. Mr Junkers, I think, would clearly be very popular coming from Luxembourg. Um, there are two issues wrapped up in that. One is the personality of Tony Blair and one is the institution of the European Union. I'm not an acolyte of Tony Blair. I've never really? met him. You've just made that up. You've never met me before. You've you just made like that one. up. Um, the oh dear, the point offended, about the... Uh, no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm correcting you he's delicately, moderately. The, straight. The, 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 the point about Tony Blair is that he is the one European statesman who is internationally recognised. One European like statesman it. not in executive office you at the moment. You heard what the French and German and the Luxembourg have been saying but about I'm, him but, today. But, but Diane, they're that, saying that's, this. Where, that's where our hope comes from. He is so effective, he's such a big figure, that it must in the end be very doubtful whether Mr Sarkozy and whether Angela Merkel will actually put up with it. Because why should they, who have been elected by the way, and yeah. are very powerful figures, uh. wish to transfer some of their authority and standing in the world to Tony Blair. So in the end, they may veto him. But our fate lies in their hands. Today, hand. all the noises are, they are going to veto him. Let me just say one well, thing. So. To appeal to it. the sympathy of our audience, right? This business about Gordon Brown saying, I hope Tony Blair gets elected. It's like a sort of, it's like a, you know those videos that people do when they're captured by terrorists, you know, and they say it's really lovely in this cellar. You know, I really who's, <laughs> who's holding him hostage? <laughs> he's, he's being held hostage by Peter Mandelson. It's a hostage so, video. Diane, you're, it's Diane, a hostage. You're, I must accuse of naivety. Look, it's perfect. Gordon thought, how can I really scupper this man's chances? I will go out there and work well, You think him. it's the kiss of, of death? Of course. Well, what is the real... Damn, what is the, the, is the real... Gordon Brown's about to leave office. He's the weakest no, figure not. in Europe, and he is out there okay. campaigning... What for is? Well, mind you... What could do him more damage? Well, Gordon Brown hasn't been elected. Why should Mr Blair be elected? I, I bet Gordon Brown That's tries to enlist fair. Berlusconi now, also, to give his support. All right, all right then, I'm not so worried about the horses and riders. I'm more worried. Uh, about the principle itself. It, Diane, exactly. I mean, is it a rack? Is that the reason why you don't want Tony Blair? Isn't it time to get over that? Well, all I know is they've uh, had meetings for the last 48 hours about it. And today, because I was online before I came on air, the Luxembourgs came out and publicly said it's yeah. difficult, a new generation yeah. associating too much with, they say we've got a new president. No, I, I didn't and ask you about Luxembourg. I mean, yeah. to, to Diane, be honest. Why didn't you react? He just told you to get over Iraq. That was quite provocative, actually. Yeah, I, I, it's, what do I, you I don't think? allow myself to be voted. I couldn't have been on this program for six years if I allowed myself to be voted. The point is, he doesn't have the support because he's too, too closely linked with Bush and Iraq. And I'm talking is that about your the rest reason? of Europe. Is it, what do you My think? My reason is that I wanted him to stop being Prime Minister. I don't want to wake up up and find he's president of the world with people like Oliver Cam licking up to him. I can't imagine anything more horrific. Just because he supports him doesn't mean he's licking up. Licking up. O Oliver, uh, certainly you've seen these Eurosceptics here. Uh, the Eurosceptics I speak to, in a way, they take a different view. In a way, they want Mr. Blair to become president because they think that would just put Euroscepticism with rocket fuel in Yeah, it would. Yes, I, I, th I think that's wrong. I think that the worst thing the European Union could do in the circumstances is to consign itself to irrelevance, which it would do if it appointed somebody who is not taken seriously on the international stage. The issue that I mentioned in the film, the 
um, Bosnian genocide committed by Karadzic and his military, uh, his paramilitary commanders. That was Europe's hour and Europe flunked it. With someone to give coherence to European diplomacy, that sort of horror, there might be a better chance of stopping it in future. I understand that, but when you, when you look coming on now to the runners and riders or who's saying what in the chancelleries of Europe at the moment, it's a real European mess. Uh, I don't quite see that Europe has made up its mind who it wants. And when it does, it won't be done on the principle you want. It'll be some massive behind the doors horse trade. I fear that's probably right. I fear that Europe has again and again founded on the horse trading and the pork barrel politics that has undermined its essential vision. No, but I believe like in the Treaty of Rome and I believe in the amending treaty that makes it more effective. Blair is the means of doing that. Do you think Europe's made up its mind who it wants yet? It seems to be all over the place. It's even hard to get a decision out of Mrs. Merkel. No, I'm absolutely sure they haven't and uh, it'll be taken at the last moment. And I think, you know, it will, sometimes it will seem that uh, Blair is assuring and sometimes it will seem that he's falling back and I don't know what the result will be. And we hear today that um, the Czechs have now got some kind of opt-out which makes it almost certain that they will now ratify yeah. the Lisbon Treaty so all 27 countries will have done so. Can we take it that since that looks like it will happen it, it, if and when the Tories get into power that the, even with the Tory government there will not be a Lisbon referendum? No, there, there, there won't be a Lisbon referendum. But there won't be British government approval of another treaty either. And although it's now the popular thing for pro-Europeans to say, oh, well, you know, we're exhausted, we wouldn't have another treaty soon, they would, of course, like to have another treaty quite soon. Goodness knows what it would do. It's create some new positions, some new centralisation. You think the Tories will dig their heels in? I do. I think, I think a Tory government, you know, if, if there's a Tory government for eight or 12 years, it will stop it happening. Okay. That's what oh, they oh, told well, let you. me give you the last one. Do you, regardless, I know you want Mr Blair to become president. I understand that. That's what you argued for. But do you think he will become president? It's a fine issue. I think he probably will be. Oh, you do? Because I think there is enough momentum for Europe to take itself more seriously and become a more integrated and powerful force that they will see the interest in doing so. And he needs Mrs. Merkel, Chancellor Merkel and President Sarkozy. They're the two key people he must get. Yes. All right. Oliver, thank you for that. I'm sorry for their behavior. They get carried away at times, you know. <laughs> One of them hasn't been taking the medication recently. But, well.